Alrighty, welcome back everyone, it's Gorland here bringing you a new Neverwinter video as the title suggests. I'm finally releasing the Mod 25 Warlock build. Uh, this video is going to be the single target build, it's going to be the recharge striker build, as well as the normal striker build. So without further ado, we're going to get into it, all the disclaimers, as always, this is meant as a template, you can build your character however you choose. I'm here just to guide you in the correct direction. So we're not using augments every, anymore. Um, everyone's kind of using strikers. So if you watched my companion testing uh, to gain the most out of your striker, you need to build recharge speed. However, as I discussed in that video, it's counterproductive to build recharge speed on the Warlock. Warlock has internal mechanics uh, that basically give it recharge speed there's no point of building recharge speed on a warlock uh, the best class to take advantage of recharge speed of course is going to be the wizard not only are you going to be buffing your encounter power cooldowns but then your striker companion is also going to do more dps so i've still got requests to do recharge speed on the warlock people still want to do it hey i can't tell you guys what to do if you want to do it then do it so this video will be set up for the first half will be the recharge speed striker build single target end game mostly focused around trowel content and then the second half will be the normal build that in my opinion every warlock should be using. Uh, this is going to be a long video uh, timestamps will be in the description as always so let's go ahead and look at the numbers here. So on a recharge speed warlock this is all single buff testing single buff and debuff testing um and like i said uh this is the recharge speed we're looking at 330,000 encounter dps in the training room i believe this was on the 35k dummy um 63 million damage so if we compare that to just a normal warlock build uh, there's no difference, honestly. There's really no difference in overall DPS uh, on the Warlock, uh, whether you build recharge speed or you don't. Keep in mind, guys, if you're going to build recharge speed, it's going to cost you a lot of money. It's going to cost you a lot of AD to switch over to recharge speed. So for the Warlock, it's not worth it in my opinion. If we go ahead and bring up the numbers uh, together, you can clearly see the recharge speed. I got, what, two additional Killing Flames off. Uh, a handful of Blades of the Vanquished Armor got, you know, uh, off. The problem is, is that the Warlock is not burst damage. It's not a wizard. It's built on DOT damage. Uh, so the only burst damage we have is Killing Flames and Soul Scorch. And even Soul Scorch has a DOT effect. So I don't know if everyone uh, just forgot how to play the Warlock or if there's just that many new players out there that don't understand the internal mechanics of the Warlock. But... I'm going to do my best to try to show you guys, you know, that there is no point in doing, you know, recharge speed on the Warlock. Uh, so if we do uh, jump in game here really quickly, just to show you guys uh, the mechanics of what I'm talking about, maybe you're unfamiliar. Um, Soul Spark Recovery. Every six Soul Sparks spent on Soul Scorch reduces your encounter cooldowns by one second. Uh, you're spamming Soul Scorch all the time. It's part of your rotation. So you just have internal recharge speed all the time. So again, it's counterproductive to actually build recharge speed. Uh, because essentially what you're doing is, if you, um, if I actually switch to the recharge speed here, and just show you guys, this is recharge speed, I'm on Warlock, um, all of your encounters are DOT tick effects. So Hellfire Ring, for example, and then Blades of the Vanquished, they have to do their full rotation of doing their damage. So now you're casting Soul Sparks or Instant Recovery, but you're already casting Hellfire. Hellfire wasn't complete. The same thing with Blades of the Vanquished. It wasn't a complete rotation. Again, full Soul Sparks uh, or Hellfire Ring's already up because of the recharge speed. Uh, so you're not gaining more damage. It's not like you're playing a wizard where you're doing that direct damage. 
you have to do your full rotation of Blades of the Vanquish to get that damage. It doesn't matter if you recast Blades of the Vanquish every two seconds. You're not going to gain additional damage from that because it's just recasting the ability. Uh, Hellfire Ring and Blades of the Vanquish has to run through its cycle per se, so you're getting that damage. Hopefully that makes sense to you guys on why, you know, recharge speed is just not, you know, relevant. So, for instance, like I said, if we just uh, cancel this, go back to the normal build of a burst, for instance, uh, and then we start a rotation, you're going to be gaining those so the soul sparks. Soul sparks are part of your rotation, it's part of your damage. Look, the, the, the cooldowns just go next to none, right? You're still going to be able to spam your abilities. Uh, and I will admit, it is a little slightly slower. With the recharge speed build, you'll notice that my re my encounters did come back faster. But again, that's irrelevant on the Warlock because it's DOT damage. Hellfire Ring and Blades has to go through its full cycle. It doesn't matter how many times you cast it. Uh, the damage is not going to increase. You're just recasting the ability and it's starting all over again, essentially. Now, one thing that Cryptic could do to change that is that Hellfire Ring could stack on itself. You could have multiple Hellfire Rings on the ground, as well as having Blades of the Vanquished, like, on multiple people doing all damage. Uh, are they ever going to do that? Highly unlikely. But that is, you know, something that could be looked at. Then Recharge Speed on the Warlock could actually be relevant, because then you could have multiple Hellfire Rings on the ground, and then you could have multiple Blades of the Vanquished on people... Uh, yourself as well as other people etc. I still hate the fact that Blades of the Vanquish can be cast on other players that's stupid in my opinion but it is what it is so hopefully that makes sense to you guys uh, again this is going to be a long video timestamps will be in, this is the discussion part of it. I'm going to run through the recharge speed build first uh, because it was asked for um, I hope no warlocks use it uh, but, you know, all of the gear is intertwined, so if you're a wizard or you play a wizard, you can use the same setup on your wizard for this recharge speed build, and it's still going to be relevant. Uh, after the recharge speed, I'll show you the normal build that, in my opinion, you should be using. We're going to go more in-depth on the normal build, so let's uh, go ahead and get started, and we'll jump right into that. Alright guys, and the first build is going to be that single target striker build built upon recharge speed. Uh, we are using Rainer's character builder. I just like the setup. It's better than trying to do it in game. I know a lot of people prefer to do it in game uh, and have those visuals, but to me this is just better because you can see your statistics, you can see everything. So, first on the list, uh, we're looking at 42.5... Uh, percent base recharge speed. Uh, I know it says 37.5, but we're taking advantage of the Regal North Dark Breaches. It's 5% recharge speed, doubling in uh, Menzo Baranzin. Now, I don't know if that actually doubles in the trow. Uh, someone leave me a comment below if you get the 10% in the trow or if it's only the campaign map. That I'm not sure of. Uh, leave me a comment below. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, if you know you only get the 5%, then yeah, you're looking at the 37.5. Uh, now you can get up to 50% recharge speed with the gloves. These are the gloves from the Dragon Hunts. Uh, whenever you are healed in combat, 10% chance you gain 7.5% recharge speed. Uh, it does have a 15 second internal cooldown. That bumps it up to 50%. Um, assuming, again, that you get the 10% from the um, pants. So, now you can boost this to 60% if you're doing a trowel that is 100% single target. So like Tower of the Mad Mage, you only have one target the entire time, and that's Halister, other than the second phase when you have the two hands. Um, the new trowel, I believe, has multiple targets, so 60% is irrelevant. 50% uh, and 60%, there's not a huge difference. I know it's 10%, but the difference is irrelevant. Uh, and what we're doing with that is we're actually using the... Um, Benediction Ring, I believe? No. The... Yes. Here. When in combat with only one enemy, your recharge speed is increased by 10%. That's uh, 
one of the rings that comes out of uh, Temple of the Spider. So you can gain another 10% recharge speed uh, by using uh, the ring. So again, that's only if it's a true single target battle. Uh, again, the neutral, not so much. So if we're looking at our statistics here, uh, overall, everything looks good. This is completely unbuffed. No buffs at all. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at the gear. We're going to use the Alliance Officer's Cap for the accuracy. The Sharp Jacket of the Dragon Hunter gives us 15% crit severity. Again, those gloves give us 7.5 recharge speed, internal cooldown of 15 seconds. Uh, your weapon set, again, this is an end game, fully decked out build. You don't have to, or if you don't have yet, the newest set then you want to use Masterwork. If you don't, for whatever reason, don't have Masterwork, then you can use the uh, Storm Forged weapons. Uh, but Masterwork is pretty much the go-to. Everyone in the game should be using Masterwork just because the buffs are, are too good not to use. We have the Dragon Hide boots that give you 10,000 crit severity when you're in a party. Uh, Three-piece set, we're using the Mythalark set still just because you have 100% uptime on combat advantage on a Warlock. The damage is really insignificant when it comes down to it. Uh, we'll look at damage at the end of the video. Uh, but it's like 5% of your overall damage. It's irrelevant. You can actually use any three-piece set that is going to benefit you. So that's completely up to you. The rings, we have one of the new rings from the new trow, which gives us... 6% uh, combat advantage when your stamina is over 75%. Then we have the Beauty Ring from Temple of the Spider. That is another 5% combat advantage. Uh, again, if you aren't to this stage or you haven't gotten the new Trow Ring yet, then you can swap this for another ring and move some statistics around. So you can put like the Critical Strike Ring here. Or if you're using that 10% um, Recharge Bang, you can put that here. Uh, the Corroded Shirt of the Dragon Cult, again, for the 5% combat advantage. Uh, then again, the Regal North Dark for that recharge speed. And then you want to be utilizing all three uh, Heart of the Dragons, the old school artifacts. Using three of these give you another 10%. So, if we look at our race real quick, because I forgot to start with that, we are still utilizing the Gith. Uh, Dex and Intelligence, and then you want to actually spec all the way into Charisma and Intelligence on your points. Charisma gives you more recharge speed. I don't know if it actually gives me the numbers uh, from Charisma on here. Uh, yeah, so we're, we're getting 7% recharge speed just from our attributes. These are your attributes. So yeah, you want to spec into Charisma, Intelligence for the damage. Let's go ahead and look at the enchantments. Uh, Garnet, Garnet, Jade, Jade uh, is just the way I have it to, hit, to you know, hit some of these statistical caps here. Uh, you're going to use the Lightning Flash, of course, for the critical strike and the accuracy. Uh, Garnets and all the defense is irrelevant. Uh, recharge speed bonus, definitely have to have that. It's 5% recharge speed. And then, of course, you're going to have your Mythic Companion enchantment. We're utilizing a Rage of Flames, which could be swapped out for whatever you essentially want damage-wise. Uh, if anything in the new trial is classified, you know, Beholder or whatever. If we have overloads that do more than 5% damage, uh, you know, go ahead and put that in. That's completely up to you. Uh, we are going to utilize Devil's Precision, however. That's 5 more percent critical strike and accuracy. Your armor kits, I have power, combat advantage. Moving on to the boons, all of the boons are irrelevant other than the quick turnaround. Uh, it's just 4% recharge speed. We're still using Bloodlust up top. Everything else is irrelevant. Just, you know, we have 100 boon points in the game right now. Uh, the boon point system is a system that needs reworked. <clears throat> Call of the Power is action point gain. Guild Stronghold, use whatever you have. Critical Strike, Defense, and then, of course, Revive Sickness. Moving to the mounts. Uh, Assassin's Covenant times two, Gladiator's Gal, and then Warlord's Inspiration times two. So, um, this has actually been nerfed. Uh, it's, it says 20%, but it actually got nerfed down to 8%. So, 
if you stack it twice, it goes up to 12% because it increases by 4%. Uh, Giant Toad, of course, for your main damage. Precision in the offhand. Uh, then your Callers, assuming you have all Mythic, the only important one out of this, again, is your Recharge Speed, 5%. So a lot of people were using the Crit Severity for 5%. Well, if you want to use Recharge Speed, you're going to have to spend the money to level up a Recharge Speed one now. Going to the Companions, again, this is a Summoned Striker build. Green Scale, Bow Green Scale Bowman is probably best in slot single target. Uh... We're using all of the Mod 24 um, gear slots here for your companion equipment. Whatever you use is up to you. These are the ones that I use for this build particularly. Uh, Acute Senses is going to be your combat advantage. Raptor's Instincts gives you like almost 19% power. Everyone needs to be using Raptor's inst Instincts at this point in the game uh, until they decide to either to nerf it into the ground. You need to take advantage of it. You don't have to use buff food because, you know, Raptor's Instinct times five, you're literally gaining almost 19% power just from one thing. So, yeah, it's pretty overpowered. Everyone in the game should be utilizing this. Uh, if you don't have one, buy one, level it up. You need to have this. In the defensive slot, we have the Golden Cat for 7.5 combat advantage. Uh, we have Wolf Instincts for 7.5 crit severity. Bateri Wisdom is just that little bonus damage, 11% uh, boss damage. And then Staldorf we have for the 7.5% combat advantage. The feats haven't changed in forever. Power of the Nine Hills, Warlock's Curse, Risky Investment, Executioner's Gift, and Soul Spark Recovery. Same thing with the powers. Hasn't changed in forever, guys. Hellish Rebuke is your at-will single target. Blades of the Vanquished, Hellfire Ring, Killing Flames. Tyrannical Curse is the only thing you should be using for your daily powers. Uh, class features, No Pity, No Mercy gives us the 100% uptime... Um, for combat advantage, Dust to Dust is just a little bonus that gives you a 5% outgoing DPS. So this is the build. Uh, you're going to notice the statistics aren't capped out. So let's talk about that momentarily here. Uh, everyone is going to be using a tutor in trial content. At least one person in your trial is going to have a tutor in a pre-made group. That immediately bumps you up to max. Uh, if you have people use an aspect of the pack in order of wrath, then it just boosts your stats a little more. Again, this is 100% completely unbuffed, no buff food at all. So now, if you want to play with buffs and everything, uh, let's say, for instance, you don't have someone using tutor for whatever reason. I don't understand why, but let's just say you don't have anyone using these. If you use the buff food, uh, Sunlord Elixir uh, persists through death. So that immediately bumps you back up to a 90% uh, hard cap of combat advantage. Uh, these are the only ones that will persist through death. Everything else will fall off if you die. We'll talk about more buffs in the actual uh, single target normal build. I don't want to go too depth on this recharge speed because no warlock should be using this. So there it is, guys. That is your recharge speed. Again, you should be able to hit 50% consistently. Uh, 15 second cooldown on this, but it might be a little lower because, like I said, if they, if you don't double this, if it's not 10% uh, in the trial, again, someone will have to confirm or deny that for me in the comments. So that is the recharge single target striker build. Again, any class can use this, especially the wizard would take the most advantage of this. So all this gear is intertwined. You can use this gear on whatever class, you know, you're playing. So there it is. There you have it. Uh, it was requested. That's the only reason I made it. So let's go ahead and jump into the normal uh, single target Warlock Striker build and what I think you should be using. Alright guys, now here is my Module 25 single target Striker build. Uh, just normal. No recharge speed. Uh, this is what I think um, every Warlock should be going toward uh, if you can um, again uh, there's many ways to build your warlock there's no real wrong way of doing it uh, there are just better ways of doing it 
So, uh, if we start with the race again, uh, we're using the Gith, uh, spec into Dexterity and Intelligence. You want to spec to Dexterity and Intelligence the whole way across. Dexterity gives you that critical severity. Intelligence just boosts your damage. Uh, if we look at our gear, uh, we're going to go in depth on this. So, the Alliance cap is 7.5% accuracy. Uh, there's really nothing better out there, in my opinion. Um, you shouldn't be shadow slipping too much, uh, but at least when you're over 75%, you're going to gain that 7.5% accuracy. So, I see a lot of Warlocks making the mistake uh, of using the Serene Hood of the Dragon Hunter. Uh, this is fantastic for other classes. The Warlock, not so much. When you damage or heal your target for more than 10% of your hit points in a single blow, you gain 1% critical strike for 10 seconds, and it stacks 10 times. So yeah, that looks phenomenal on paper. Uh, it's 10% critical strike. However, the Warlock is based upon DOT damage. It's not direct damage. Uh, in a unscaled content, I have over a million HP. So 10% of a million is 100,000. I have to be hitting my target for 100,000 damage consistently. The Warlock does not do that, guys. It does not do that. It's the same thing with all of the chest plates. Uh, going all the way back to Module 19 with the Garisto's Horns and the Bone Rib Cage. It was all 10% of your HP. Uh, they were not good for Warlocks. And I consistently see Warlocks using this helmet and using other chess pieces. Uh, there are numerous chess pieces with, um, you know, that uh, mechanic. Whenever you damage an enemy, um, oh, well, that's the one I'm wearing. Uh, uh, when you damage or heal your target for more than 10% of your HP, 1.5 critical strike, 1 point crit severity. I see a lot of Warlocks wearing it. It's garbage. Uh, there's one for accuracy and combat advantage. Uh, it's garbage. Um, the five stacks aren't horrible. The ten stack one for the helmet is bad. You're never going to max it out. Um, even if we if we go ahead and look at that in game right now, let's go look at that in game right now. I'll show you guys. Um, do I even have that helmet on? Yeah. So, here's our helmet. We're on our single target build. Uh, the buffs will be literally right here. You'll see Butcher's Focus come up. So, let's just do a rotation here. So, it's going to go nice off the rip because we're bursting our damage. And there, there's one stack. We just got one stack. Two stacks. Uh, Soul Scorch. Four stacks. Five stacks. Back, back down to four. Back down to three. Not going to come anywhere close to 10 stacks, guys. It doesn't matter what you're doing. Um, like I said, back up to 4 stacks. So that's 4% critical strike. You're not utilizing that helmet to its fullest potential. We're up to 7, 8, back down to 7, 6. Like I said, uh, I'm not saying you can't get 10 stacks. You can get 10 stacks in a good rotation. But maintaining those 10 stacks, it, it's just not worth the hassle. The Warlock does not have enough direct damage. As you can see, we're all we're down back down to two stacks. Um, we've never once hit ten stacks yet. So, like I said, uh, I see so many Warlocks using that helmet, as well as those breastplates, that you're just missing statistics. There's, there's no reason to use it. Uh, it's not good on the Warlock, guys. It's really not good. You can see those stacks just falling off. You cannot maintain those stacks. Therefore, it's just wasted statistics, uh, and in my opinion, you should not be using it. So that's why the Alliance cap is pretty much the go-to. At least you're gaining uh, the stats at almost 100% uptime, as long as you're not shadow slipping around. It is what it is. Now, for other classes, yeah, the crit helmet is fine. If you're a wizard, yeah, you're doing loads of damage on the wizard. You're going to hit that 10%. Uh, even in the character builder here, I'm over a million HP. 
Uh, so again, you have to be doing 100,000 damage every hit to maintain those st those stacks. It's just, it doesn't work. And that's another reason why we're using the Sharp Jacket of the Dragon Hunter. This literally gives us 15% crit severity almost instantly. Uh, again, I'll just show that really quickly. So we're doing in-depth uh, discussions here. If I go back into it... Uh, what is it? It's Reckless Rage. You literally cast your Hellfire Ring once and you get all stacks of Reckless Rage. So, let's see here. Here's our Hellfire Ring. And your Reckless Rage times 5. 15% crit severity. Basically, instantly. It's literally instantly. So, using any other chest plates is kind of irrelevant. Um... It's just the way it works right now. If they ever modify it or change it, then so be it. But as it sits right now, there's nothing that's going to beat that. Something giving you 15% of a single stat instantly is just too good not to use, guys. You have to be utilizing that. Uh, now, if we're talking about the arms, arms suck. The arms have sucked in the game for a while now. Uh, unfortunately, these are no different. These arms are horrible. Um, magnifying Forces, you have a 10% chance to deal 235 additional damage, um, and they're just bad. Uh, unfortunately, there's no real better arms to use. You can go back to the Dragon Hunt arms, the ones that give you 5% outgoing damage when you get hit, etc. But they're not that great either. There's just, unfortunately, no real arms in the game. Uh, that are that are good. So if we go ahead and bring up um, just the damage here, uh, you could see magnifying force. I think this was you know like a I don't know how long this test was. I don't remember offhand. Uh, but magnifying force only hit for seven times, uh, and it does not crit. Is one of the problems. You uh, magnifying force will not crit. Uh, it does get combat advantage damage that helps it a little bit. But you could see it was almost 3,000 uh, encounter DPS. It, it's abysmal. The damage is absolutely abysmal. Uh, this was probably like a four-minute test, maybe. A three-minute test, four-minute test, five-minute test. I don't remember. Um, but Magnified Force did, you know, barely over 500,000 damage. It's just so insignificant. Uh, if it didn't have a cooldown on it, and it didn't, uh, or if it did have the possibility to crit, then yeah, it would probably be really good. Uh, but it has an internal cooldown of 20 seconds, which is horrible, uh, and it cannot crit, it, it can't crit. So, it, they're bad. They're bad. Uh, unfortunately, like I said, there's really nothing else to use. So, if you want to use something else, be my guest. Uh, I mean, you can honestly go back all the way to like Mod 16 and use... Uh, the Seer of Stars or whatever it's called. Seer of the Star Gloves, I believe they're called. Uh, and your at will powers do 3% more damage. I think there's an encounter one though, isn't there? I could have sworn there was an encounter power one, but maybe there isn't. I don't remember offhand. Um, I really thought there was. Oh, there it is. Uh, yeah, the Tempter of the Twilight's Gloves. These literally came from Master Expeditions. Like, how many people out there even have these gloves? I do. I still have mine in my bank. Uh, but new players? Yeah, good luck going back and farming Master Expeditions uh, to get these gloves. Uh, it's simply just your encounter powers do 3% more damage. Uh, that, in my opinion, 3% more damage is probably better than the damage output of the new gloves in-game. <laughs> I mean, it just, it is what it is, guys. There's just, unfortunately, there's no new gloves that are worth it. Uh, a lot of people bought these crit severity gloves. They're super expensive. No one's going to pay 5 million, 7 million, 9 million AD uh, for gloves for to get this crit severity, especially when we have the boots in the game now. Um, again, it's all my opinion. You guys can do whatever you choose, uh, but there are no good gloves in the game, in my opinion, right now. Main hand, offhand, uh, if you're lucky enough to get the new set uh, from the trial, then so be it. If not, you should be using Masterwork. Any Masterwork will work. They all stack. So if you're using, you know, uh, 
the old masterwork or if you're using the Sharandar masterwork. It doesn't matter. Everyone's going to be using masterwork, especially in a trial setting, uh, until you're able to get your new weapon set. Now the boots on the other hand, we are using these boots to utilize the critical strike. It's 10,000 critical strike, can't really pass that up. Three piece set, we're using the Mithalar Shard. Uh, again, you don't have to use this. Um, if we bring that up momentarily, if we just look at it, uh, the Mithalar Shard is um, the raw pressure. It's 18,000 encounter DPS. It's not horrible, but it's also not the best. Um, raw pressure, uh, if it would actually critical strike and combat advantage, it doesn't. If it did, it would be just tremendous damage. Uh, keep in mind, the Warlock has 100% uptime on combat advantage. So, in my opinion, do you have to use the Mythalar set? No, you don't have to. Uh, but there's nothing really out there that's better, uh, in my opinion. So, again, raw pressure, uh, you know, it was 18,000 of this test as far as the encounter DPS goes. So, it's not horrible. Uh, we're using the Lothian uh, Arrogance, uh, which is one of the new rings. If you don't have access to this yet, then use something else. Use a Crit Strike Ring, use a Crit Severity Ring, whatever. You'll just have to rebalance your statistics a little bit. We're using the Beauty, which comes from Master of the uh, Temple of the Spider, uh, for 5% combat advantage. You're getting 11% uh, combat advantage just from these two rings, which is important. Uh, the Mithlar set, again... We're still using the Corroded Shirt because we need that 5% combat advantage. And then the Splendid North Dark Breaches uh, just simply gives us the action point game, which is nice to have. Again, leave me comments below if it doubles in the trow. I don't know. Uh, so that would be 10% in the trow, uh, but it might just be in the campaign zone. I'm not sure. So leave me a comment below. Uh, Three-piece artifacts. We're using the uh, Storytellers. Uh, a lot of people... Uh, don't use these anymore. I still use them. Um, it is what it is. The stats on them are still good. There's nothing really better. Yeah, you can slot uh, all of the new artifacts here to boost your base damage. Uh, that's up to you. I'm not telling you what to do. Uh, I prefer the tells journals still. Let's go ahead and look at enchantments now. Garnet, Garnet, uh, Citrine, and Citrine. Uh, Garnet, all Garnets on defense, uh, Lightning Flash, Mythic Companion Enchantment, Rage of Flames can be swapped out for whatever damage you need, Devil's Precision, we still need the Critical Strike and Accuracy, Power down the left, Combat Advantage down the right, Boons, completely irrelevant, uh, Critical Strike, Defense, Self Revive, or Revive Sickness rather for your Stronghold, this is all irrelevant. Um, as long as you have the Bloodlust, you're using uh, AP. You don't have to use Quick Turnaround, but a little bit of Recharge Speed doesn't help. You can go into Forte. It doesn't really matter. The whole Boon system needs reworked. It's all trash. We have 100 Boon points in the game. Max out whatever you want to max out. Let's talk about Mounts. Uh, Assassin's Covenant times two, Gladiator's Gal, Warlord's Inspiration. Again, I talked about Warlord's Inspiration was nerfed at some point, don't know when. Uh, 20% uh, on the character builder, it's not 20%, it's actually 8%. They nerfed it pretty heavily. <clears throat> if we go back in game here real quick and look. Oh, let's see here. Warlords, here we go. Uh, your Summon Companion... Gains 12% more damage, which means it's 8%. It's 8% base, and then I gain another 4% from having two of them, which is increases to 12%. So I don't know when they nerfed that. Uh, I don't know if it was ever published that it was nerfed. No idea when that happened, uh, but apparently it happened. But it is what it is. There's nothing else to use. Uh, until we get more mounts with four slots on them and move stuff around but as it sits right now this is what we're using uh giant toad tongue for the damage uh we're using precision here for critical strike crit severity uh mythic callers if you're lucky enough to have them the only real important one is the crit severity five percent uh everything else is irrelevant movement speed stamina gain uh encounter dps and then rough ad stupid 
Uh, but yeah, well, you want to have that 5% crit severity just because you can't pass up raw statistical bonuses. Companions, again, this is a active striker build. Green scale bowman for single target. We're using three pieces uh, of the mod 24 companion gear. These are the ones I'm using. As far as bonuses go, uh, precision we're using for critical strike. Raptor's Instincts, as I mentioned earlier in the video, everyone should be using Raptor. Everyone. It is the meta. It doesn't matter if you're in a pug group. It doesn't matter if you're in a trial group. It doesn't matter. Everyone should have Raptor slotted somewhere. Whether it's a utility slot or your offensive slot, it's like almost 19% power. Until they decide to nerf it or adjust it, it's way too overpowered to not be using a Raptor. So when you're in a group, uh, five people all using Raptors. Like I said, it's almost 19% power. I believe it's like, what's the actual number on it? 18.8%. That's insane. That's insane. Now, Fire Archon, I don't like using, and we can make changes, which we'll talk about. Uh, but we're using it right now. Uh, it's, you know, 7.5 combat advantage. Uh, and it's triggered off your at wills. Now you're going to be spamming at wills, so it's going to almost have 100% uptime, but I can't say that it has 100% uptime. There will be times where you're missing the 7.5%, and I don't like that. Golden Cat, 7.5 combat advantage. Staldorf, 7.5 combat advantage. And Bateri is just that 11% extra boss damage. You're going to notice no bonus damage other than the Bateri here, folks. All of that bonus damage is, is irrelevant, in my opinion. I know there's a lot of builds out there floating around that are maxing out their statistics and then have all that bonus damage. Hey, you don't need it. You really don't. Neverwinter, the, the internal mechanics of Neverwinter, all this bonus damage is irrelevant. This 11% bonus damage is garbage. It doesn't really matter in the long run. You might as well have hard statistics than this bonus damage, in my opinion. 11% uh, is probably more like 7% if you're lucky. So, it's just the way the game is. It's the way it's coded. Uh, and, you know, it is what it is. The feats haven't changed. Power of the Nine Hells, Warlock's Curse, Risky Investment, Executioner's Gift, and Soul Spark Recovery. Same thing with the powers. Hellish Rebuke, Blades, Hellfire, Killing Flames, Tyrannicals, the only uh, daily you're ever going to use. No Pity, No Mercy for the 100% uptime on combat advantage. Dust to Dust gives you an extra 5% outgoing damage. Uh, again, irrelevant. All outgoing damage bonuses, kind of irrelevant. Now, there it is, folks. That's the build. Now, let's have some discussion on what we can move around. First of all, foremost, you'll see the stats, what's capped, what's not. If you're going to be in a trial setting, everyone should have a tutor, right? At least one person in the trial should be utilizing a tutor. Uh, that immediately caps out your combat advantage. Aspect of the pack, if you're lucky enough to have someone with, with it, and then someone has Aura of Wrath. <coughs> Excuse me. So these are your stats on this build with zero self-buffs. Okay? This is not utilizing any buffs at all. Zero potions. Nothing. Okay, this is the way I like to play. I don't want to rely on potions, especially in a 10-man trowel. You're most likely going to die, okay? Unless you're in a super OP endgame group that knows exactly what you're doing, and then even then, mistakes can be made, you're going to lose your potions. There's only one potion that persists through death, and that's going to be your elixir. So whether you use the Wildstorm elixir, or the Sun Lords, uh, that's completely up to you. Uh, I like to use Sun Lords because it boosts my accuracy. So if we pop a Sun Lords, accuracy goes up to 65%. You're going to notice we're over capped on combat advantage now, right? We're at 11% combat advantage. Now there are things you can do with that. Uh, again, this is a, a, assuming... Someone's using a tutor aspect of the pack, right? Even if we take those off, assuming someone isn't using that, with the Sun Lords, you're still going to be capped on your combat advantage, which is important for the Warlock because we have 100% uptime on combat advantage. So, not relying on any buffs. 
uh, other than Sun Lords, which persists through death. Sun Lord lasts an hour. It's an hour long potion. Uh, and it, even if you die, it doesn't matter. You're not going to lose that buff. So now uh, you're just capped by 1.2%. Now, again, in this trial setting, if you are lucky enough to have these buffs going, uh, well, then, yeah, you're over capped. So now you can make some decisions here. Uh, the Fire Archon can actually change to something damage-related. Obviously, you're going to use the bigger they are. That's the only damage-related thing there is. So now that's an extra 5.3%. Again, completely irrelevant. It, it really is. Um, I'd rather have the raw statistics. So if you want to boost something else, for instance, I don't know what else is there. Uh, critical chance and accuracy, for that matter. Um... We're looking for something here. Phase Spider is a good one, right? Yeah, Phase Spider is Critical Strike Combat Advantage. Um, nothing else really worthwhile, I don't believe, other than Phase Spider. So Phase Spider is Critical Strike Combat Advantage. But like I said, if you want to go that route with the bigger they are, that's up to you. Um, it is what it is, guys. So... If you want to, like I said, there's many things you can do. There's no wrong way of doing it. So let's say you keep your Fire Archon here, right? Let's say you want to get rid of Staldorf then. So you're still relying on the procs, but now you have a universal slot. So instead of using the bigger they are, now you can use something like the Neverwinter Knight, right? Neverwinter Knight to slip it. Is 7.5% outgoing. Still capped. Right? Like I said, there are many things that you can play around with. This is simply a template that you can move around. So, and even if you don't want to do that, if you want to go back to your Style Dwarf. And let's say you don't have this ring, right? So you're going to be missing the combat advantage from this ring. So now you have to use something else. I think there is a uh, critical strike ring, right? Yeah, here it is. Obligation. You gain 5% critical strike. So let's select that. Right? So now our critical strike went up 80%. Combat advantage is still capped out by 5%. So you could even slap something else around. You could probably get rid of this if you wanted. You can use a different shirt to get rid of that control resist. Because <clears throat> this is 5% combat advantage. But it's also negative 25% control resist. There's not really any better shirts in the game. But hey, whatever. Like I said, you can move things around, guys. Um, that's completely up to you what you have access to. This is merely just a template. Uh, and again, that's just with one buff. Now if you want to get risky for the bisky, let's say you want a buff. So now you're using your flask of potency. Uh, and then what are you going to use? Squash soup? That squash shoot buffs you up to 84% crit, or your watermelon sorbet, 70% accuracy, uh, almost 80% crit, right? So, and now your crit severity is overcapped, you know, your combat advantage is overcapped. Like I said, whatever you guys want to do, this is simply a template. Uh, but remember, if you die, you're going to have to try to pop those again. I like specifically playing with no buffs other than one that persists through death. Uh, and I like again, assuming you're in a trial setting, some someone should be using the tutor. Uh, you should have an aspect of the pack in an order of the wrath, uh, but you might not. So there it is, guys. Hopefully, I've gone over everything that I wanted to go over. Hopefully, you enjoyed it. If I decide to put out like an AOE build. Um, and single target build for like Temple of the Spider. I may, I may not. Leave me a comment below if you'd like that. This is an end game striker build, usually used for trials. This can be used single target for anything. Um, like I said, you're not really relying on this uh, as much because if you have no one using it, 
you're going to be using that Sun Lords anyway. So you're still going to be capped out, even without someone using this. So if you're in a pug group, as far as single target goes, you can still hit all your caps, uh, assuming you have everything that I just showed you. Uh, hopefully I explained everything. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, go ahead and leave them below. I know this video was super long, but it is what it is. Normally the build videos are. Uh, if you watched the entire thing, leave me a hashtag below that just says uh, hashtag Warlocks Rock. Uh, share it with your guild. Share it with your friends. Again, I see so many Warlocks in game these days just making silly mistakes. Like I said, using the incorrect helmet using the incorrect armor uh they're just losing statistics uh and they're gonna get smoked in dps so wizards are still pretty much top tier dps uh but warlocks can hang if you're playing warlock correctly uh you can hang with a wizard uh, a good wizard is still gonna smoke you but it is what it is so hopefully you enjoyed the video that's all i got for you that is the module 25 single target striker uh, build uh, for recharge speed and non-recharge speed. Again, don't use recharge speed on a Warlock. Do not be a little Timmy. That's all I got for you guys. I'll see you real soon.